everybody how y'all doing uh this is jomi beats from minneapolis minnesota uh i'm gonna be here with the uh country fan mail podcast get a conversation and give you guys more information about me uh be great listen so please tune in i'm sure you're gonna enjoy it yo 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 what's going on everybody it's your boy clued down country fan mail podcast season five episode i don't even know but it don't even matter here with another dope ass episode i want to thank everybody for tapping in listening all around the world i appreciate y'all i don't really care if you only hit it once you hit it i appreciate it it definitely means a lot you know saying hearing this podcast seeing this podcast being heard all over the world seeing that it comes from inside this little room right here maybe not this room because this is a new studio but you know inside a room nonetheless I digress. Anyways, so we've got a really dope episode coming up. Uh, really excited to talk to this cat. Uh, have another producer coming up. Uh, as y'all know, I don't I haven't had too many, haven't had the opportunity to have too many producers come on to the show. But the ones that I do have come on, hella profound, crazy catalog, by the way. And you know, what I'm saying let my EP tell it. She introduced me to him. I think I found him earlier, but we ain't gonna get into that. But anyways, before I get too deep into it, I want to introduce to the stage from Minnesota, the homie. Jomi Beats, what's going on, G? Hey, what's going on, man? Thank you for having me. Already, man. I appreciate you coming on to the show. Uh, I'm I'm glad to be here, man. I love talking about you know music and especially talking with podcasts because I what you guys do is art. Like you guys are creators and the art of being able to carry a conversation and put people on to like new artists or producers or whatever the case may be. Like that's a talent that I really respect. So I'm definitely happy to be here. For sure, man. For sure. I, I, I appreciate you saying that, man. Sometimes I feel like I just be sitting up here just talking. Like, I ain't got, like, it, it don't even really be a mountain to shit. <laughs> I, just be, you know, I just be talking, but, you know, some people do, you know, some definitely tap in. And um and like I said, I, I, I find, you know, a lot of pleasure in bringing, introducing people to new dope-ass people, you know what I'm saying, like yourself. So definitely getting into it, man. First question I got to ask, what was mm-hmm. the first song that you listened to when you woke up this morning? Let's see. The first song I listened to was and it was honestly, I think it was an Aaliyah song. I don't know why. I, I just for some reason maybe I hit shuffle and that was the first thing that came on. And I kind of went down like a old like a Aaliyah wormhole. It was Rock the Boat came on, and then I had to go back to all the classics like Are You That Somebody? Uh yeah, a couple like soundtrack songs I liked. And a lot of times it was the beats, you know. Background to me being a producer, like those songs, yeah, it was Timberland, man. I was like, yeah, I gotta listen to this, like that old school Tim. Nothing beats that. They was different, man. They was they was really yeah. different. I feel like that 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 era of beat making, man. It was, it was. Um, I feel like you know at that point in time, we know we're, we're definitely gonna get into a you know saying a little bit of what you do, and I'm a I'm a a, a super amateur audio producer myself um so i was like certain little things i recognize certain i'm but i'm still you know saying vanilla to a lot of it but i feel like back then and that in that time i'll say i guess maybe the 90s maybe early 2000s like not everybody had access to everything that was going on and if you weren't in the place with them you couldn't really make the magic now it's like you could be in another world down there you could send somebody a beat (laughs) you know yeah the power of the internet is crazy now it's hella crazy, man. It's hella crazy. So yeah, man. So so actually, before I even get into you know, say a little bit more um, into you know, saying uh, your past and everything, mm-hmm. just kind of keeping it light, you know, saying to start off with, we brought up Timbaland. Uh, what are some of some other producers that you looked up to as you were kind of uh, you know, learning or as you are still learning? Off top is the Neptunes, man. Like the Neptunes run when they were like on the top, like that was crazy. And when I was a kid, like um, you know. I listened to their songs and it was great. But then at a certain point, like in high school, I got uh, access to instrumentals. And then that's when I really fell in love with the Neptunes. Because sometimes, you know, there's a song like I didn't like the, I didn't like the, the bars, but I like the beat. So now yeah. I can actually listen to the beat. And that's listening to the beat ended up turning into me studying the beat. So like I learned a lot about my production style from them. So for me, it's, and I, it's always been hats off like to the Neptunes. Like they're just... The greatest and then there's the hip-hop side and then there's like pete rock dj premier um i like a lot of underground nice. people like like d like dj blackhead i don't know if you know who that is uh blackhead um yeah i've heard of that one and then even like there was like the the 
old school producers like who was it? Um they, they did like some of the biggest joints. What was their name? Trackmaster. Like, yo, like Trackmasters was nice. Like people like now may not say that name, but Trackmasters had hits back then. Like it was crazy. Like those types of producers. I mean, that's when I was growing up, that's who was out. So that's kind of who I was listening to and kind of got my style from. For sure, man. For sure. There's there's all those all those producers outside of those, you know, I think those though that one that I didn't recognize, man. I pretty much resonated all the same, especially with the Neptune. Yeah. Like I was, I was super heavy. I mean, I used to, I used to think I was skateboard, skateboard peak growing up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like I was, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was all over it. But um, but yeah, the Neptunes, they, they, I feel like you know they were some of the first people that 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 taught that that made beats that were so they were so simple because they could almost be replicated. But at the same time, you can never yeah. do it quite like them, like the grinding beat. You know what I'm saying? We all know that. Yeah. That beat. That everybody could kind of replicate on the lunch table, but it wasn't exactly, quite- yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's crazy too, though, because if you think about it, like producers back then, they all had their own sound. The Neptune had a sound, Timbaland had a sound, Swiss Beats had a sound, Polo the Dawn had a sound. Like, so that's one thing that if listen to my music, that's one thing, especially now that I really try to focus on is having my own sound. So if you hear that beat, you know it's a drummy beat. Or like I could be type beaded if that's the term. Like if someone says a Jomi type beat, you know what that kind of is because I kind of have certain things that I like to do. So yeah. that yeah, that was very influential listening to those types of people. And you know, I'm I'm really glad that you actually went into that too because that's I feel like that era is something that um and maybe I'm just now becoming um aware of it because I'm kind of getting into, you know what I'm saying, like amateur beat making myself, but that mm-hmm. tight beat era. Like, I feel like everything now is like J. Cole type beat, Kendrick type yeah. beat, Kendrick type beat, XX Tentacion type beat, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all these. So it's like, is that is that ever something that you found yourself, um, not as far as your own craft, because of course, you know, Jomi type beats are clearly Jomi type beats, but like, mm. is there something that, uh, is there, have you, have you ever found yourself kind of, uh, trying to dabble into making a, I don't know, J. Cole type beat, Jay Z type beat, you know what I'm saying? That's the part I don't really understand about it. Like, if they are making a beat with this rapper in mind, or did you make a beat and this rapper would sound good on it? Like, I guess that's kind of the part that I'm not really sure if it's a mixture of both or, you know, really, because I, I don't make tight beats like that. To be honest with you, yeah. I really don't sell beats, like, blindly. That's what I think tight beats usually is. It's like, it's like a beat star type of thing. And I have one, but I don't actually kind of delete it. Like, I, I understand how people do it, but for me, I, I it just, it's kind of weird to me. So I think you should just pretty much you know it, a beat is a beat like if if it's good for this like if it's good if you are a conscious rapper hip-hop rapper this type of beat would sound good for you then that makes sense but i think i don't know just making a uh trying to mimic something isn't that's not a good look to me you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like don't mimic a timlin type beat even though this is your style over here but this is hot now, so I'm gonna make a beat that sounds like this. I don't like yeah. it. Alright, listen. If y'all tired of having all that drama in your interviews, asking all those stupid questions, not even taking the chance to get to know you, come interview with Country Fan Man. Yeah, that's the part I don't like. Okay, okay. That's that's actually that's actually really a different perspective that I actually never thought about. Um, I, I really like that, and you know, I'm actually I'm actually curious if it kind of you know because I guess I've never thought about just the the fact that some beat makers, you know, what I'm saying what can can and do sell beats anonymously or randomly, you know, what I'm saying yeah. to anybody, and then some some producers are very much so. I, I don't know if it's called like I don't know if tailor made is probably the best way to say it. You know, saying you you know you're very much so either gonna do it for yourself and, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Either you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it for a very specific purpose and or artist. 
Yeah, so yeah. what I do, yeah, I kind of make my beats in batches. So I make, I'll just make a bunch of beats, kind of mix them down, and then eventually I'll find something new where there's like a new sound I'll get obsessed with or a VST or a synthesizer or something. And then when I get into that, I'm like, oh, let's go. Now that's the start of another bag. So pretty much I just have, I, I don't want to tell you how many beats I have just sitting on this computer, but what happens is, can like, you guess me? Because I'm actually curious. That. <laughs> can you, can you, bro, I have, awesome I have two hard drives. I have two hard drives. <laughs> I tried to organize it, but it, it's not really working. But I have two hard drives with just albums and just older beats. Because, I mean, not everything's going to come out. Sometimes it's just an exercise. But, um, but um, what was the question? Uh, shit, I don't even remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we were just, we were just, I, I guess we were just kind of, I was, I was more so getting an understanding for the different types of, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, the beat makers, the ones that kind of make beats, you know, commission oh, yeah. makers versus, you know, like you said, you have fucking hard drives full of beats. You know, yeah. I, I remember like my, you know, quick segue, my computer crashed maybe about, maybe about a year ago. And I had like seven beats. Like, mm -hmm. like, just like seven, maybe total. Now, that might be exaggerated. I cried. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. It hurts. Uh, it, that was funny. Like, I can imagine. Yeah, when that, when that one time, I don't know what I did. I'm, I had these beats. I'm like, yo, these beats are crazy. It was like five beats. And I moved them from one hard drive to the next, and they disappeared. And I'm like, Where, where's, where's the session? Where's the session? The session was gone. I have the stems, but I'm too lazy to mix it again. So they're just kind of, old now but it hurt my feelings like it, i remember i shut the computer i didn't come back for a couple of days <laughs> I, hey, no, like, I feel that though, I feel that yeah. though. it's like you you could it, you know it gets to a point where it's like you can almost recreate and then the crazy part about it is some of those beats that i had were for a class and i was mm. so pissed off that i couldn't even recreate it for the class i ended up failing the class i couldn't recreate the shit because it was so it's a vibe it's not even just making the beat again it's that vibe that she was in you're like oh i'm killing i'm killing i'm killing it and it makes yep. the beat so much better. But then when I come in, like, oh, now I have to do this. I have to make it like it was before. It's not as fun. And sometimes yeah. that's why I just have to kind of let it go. Um, but back to what you're saying about the type beats and stuff. To me, I market myself like a rapper would market themselves. Meaning my name is my name. You know what I'm saying? Like you take pride in your name. Just like I'm sure on your show, there might be a rapper who reaches out to you, but you might listen to their music. You might be like, mm -mm, not a good fit. Rappers will do the same thing. This rapper wants to work with me. It's not a good fit. As a producer, I feel like I should hold myself to the same standards. That's why I can't really see myself doing blind sales. If somebody wants a beat, I need to make sure that they fit it and that their image and what the song, how it's going to come out. It's something I'm willing to market myself behind because I'm going to push your song just like I would push my own. I feel so. that, though. I feel that. I feel like, you know, when you, when you, but, you know, it's like as, 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 as some people might even listen to what you're saying and be like, damn, that's wild. I feel like when you really look at the greats and those people that you just mentioned, all those different producers, you don't hear random motherfuckers walking around with Timberland beats. You don't hear random motherfuckers walking around with Neptune's beats. You don't hear random people walking around with, you know what I'm saying, like all these different hit boy, all you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even like you don't hear random people. They are very selective with the people that they choose to work with. So it's like I feel a hundred percent what you're saying. Like I, yeah. I never I never really thought about it. like not not to discredit the other side of the beat making. Right. No, like, yeah, because some you know, people they, like they get in a bag over there, and I get it because I'm not. I'm not really in it for the money, to be honest with you. I probably put way more in than I get out. But to me, I do music because this is just what I want to do. Like, I don't really care about the money. I just like talking to people like yourself. I like yeah. working with other artists. I like making music itself. Even if I didn't have the internet, I'm still making beats like crazy. So this is just an outlet for me. That's for sure. That's that's yeah. a fact, man. I think that's that's different. You don't I don't I don't really hear that too much. Um in the in the industry, you know what I'm saying? That that were you know, I guess that we're both in, you don't really hear too much of anybody in the entertainment industry or in the arts, I'll say, doing yeah. it for for the love or for you know, say for for the for the for the passion, for the you know, for the drive anymore. Everything kind of has a you know, kind of, kind of, you know, always has kind of like a bottom line, um, which is, it's kind of unfortunate, you know what I'm saying? I really feel yeah. like, you know, um, there was, you know, I'll say probably like from ages, like maybe 
40 and down, we weren't really given that. We, we didn't have that. We didn't really have that life. We didn't really have the life yeah. where it's like you can kind of maybe, you know, saying, hit, you know, maybe hitchhike around and just do random things everywhere. You know, back in like the 70s and shit when they used to do that. We couldn't do that yeah. shit tonight. You don't get snatched up trying to, you know, hitchhike around <laughs> right. talking about yeah. big beats for free. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. But, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's, but at the flip side, like some people might say that that's kind of crazy, but on the flip side, if I know that your style works with my music, I know how to, I can, it's easier for me to market you, it's easier for me to push you. Like it's yeah. easier for my fans to attach to what we did versus somebody whose style is totally different and they just happen to pick a beat. Like I, I don't know, to me, in my business mindset, I, I just, I couldn't really make that work. I'd rather be all in on it, believing when I'm pushing mm. and, you know, like I said, push their song just like it's my own. Cause that that works out better for everybody involved, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So so you know so I think this is a good way to kind of segue into it because you know you talk a lot about you know how your beliefs and, and your morals and what you stand on. So kind of going all the way back to you know saying you coming up, you know saying tell me about how it was coming up and in Minnesota and how that has essentially you know saying positioned you to to be where you're at as far as you know. I mean, just where you at, Jummy Beach, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Minnesota is, is, a, is a great place. Like, a lot of people, I feel like, underestimate, underestimate our music scene. It's pretty big. And there's, like, a wide vast of styles. Like, there's people who do, like, the street shit, the hip-hop music. Uh, there's, there's bands. There's venues all over the place. So it's easy to get exposed to a lot of different types of music. Um, for me, I've always kind of an interest in music, but I didn't really know much about it until I remember it was Thanksgiving and like I had some rap CDs from my mom so you can only imagine what that was so my brother came in on Thanksgiving and he had the big old CD book he was like and I'm flipping through it he was like yo listen to some of this I'm like okay so I remember the first thing I took out was DMX and if you can imagine me being a kid hearing DMX for the first time like barking and just going off it's just like what is it I remember I stole that CD I took that and I was like, it was like, I would start going through and then there was like the Rough Riders compilation in there. There was all this stuff. And that just kind of opened my mind to like, okay, I, I do like rap music. I, this is, I like how this sounds. It wasn't really yeah. even the beats. It was just, it was just different. Like it was loud. It was aggressive. It was totally different. Cause I'm used to listening to, you know, you grew up listening to the stuff your parents were playing. And this is far from that. So far with that, that, I kind of just, it kind of just started snowballing. I started kind of dabbling into different stuff. Cause if you remember stuff was really re regional back then. So that DMX stuff, that was all East coast. Mm -hmm. And then somehow I found West coast, which was like, it was like Snoop and corrupt and the dog pound and all this stuff. And that ended up down South kind of dabbled in that. And I went through like a cash money, hot boys phase. I had all those CDs. And we all like did. Those, <laughs> man, they were the ugliest covers. <laughs> but those albums were great, though. The album covers but, were so trash. I had the most yeah. going on. With them. Like <laughs> The chains were just extra, the shiny. But I remember Hot Boys, Guerrilla Warfare. I'll never forget. I remember I bought that album my own money. And I, I played that CDL. Um, but then I kind of started listening to... Uh, local hip-hop a lot there's a label called doom tree up here um they were kind of like i guess i can kind of say like alternative rap kind of um at times okay. it was very interesting and it was different from what i was listening to already like me jumping around to different regions was really me just listening to what else is there like i listened to all different types of music and i think that kind of shows in mind like just listening I think it's weird when producers just listen to hip hop because hip hop is made of different genres of music. So I feel like it's nice to be kind of well-rounded and be able to pull aspects and sounds and influence from different types of music because it helps evolve your sound into more of a, a diverse sound, if you know what I mean. That Because at this rate, like if you, the next couple of months, you'll see I have a, a few collaborations coming out and all these artists sound different and i was able to kind of like okay this is how you rap let me see what i could do with you in mind let me see what i can make and then you know 
some people are faster, slower, the accents come into play, mm-hmm. the just the slang terminology. So all that comes into play. And to me, that's exciting because it keeps me on my toes and it keeps me making sure my sword is sharp in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to make sure I give you something that is reflective of me and also it makes sense for you. That goes back to what I was saying, why I can't do blind sales because I want to make sure the beat that you pick is just, it, it's for you. Like I can't, some, I like especially with nonsense, the beats I make for him, if he doesn't use it, sometimes I can't really see myself giving it to anybody else because it's for you. Like you're going to kill this. And with him, once I get back to the main question, but with him, awesome. it's kind of interesting how it's evolved because now I n- kind of know the beat he's going to pick. And he's the first person where I've really kind of like worked with like that. Like we got some songs in the tuck that are going to be crazy, but it's kind of interesting. Like I was able to kind of pull from different sounds and give it to him. And I was able to formulate a beat that he, he would accept. Even as crazy as I could go, like I can be like, okay, I'm listening to, to Bjork and some random stuff. And I got I just kind of buy from it and I'm gonna make something. And you're a hip hop artist, but you'll still rock with this beat. You know what I'm saying? And it sounds mm-hmm. like me and it sounds like you. And to me, that's the goal with being a producer. And that's something that I've learned from during these times of going from different coasts and listening to these different producers, because every area had a sound, but Timbaland could still work with Snoop. You know what I'm saying? Timlin could still work with Petey Pablo. Timlin could work with T.I. The Neptunes could work with T.I. The Neptunes could work with, with uh, Exhibit. Like they can, they can adapt their sound to work with this person and still represent themselves. That's so that's something, yeah, so that's something that I was kind of starting to pick up over time. Because like I said, eventually I just got into instrumentals and I got fascinated in just how they came together and you know, I didn't really have access because the internet wasn't really that big back then. And I'm, I'm mm. 35, so this is like early 2000s. It was kind of big, but not like networking. Like, I don't even know when MySpace came out. But like, I didn't really have an outlet to meet up with other producers. So I was kind of doing things on my own. So I guess my music expansion kind of... I guess it kind of peaked around that time because now I already know what types of music are out. It just kind of fine tuning to my taste. Um, But yeah, that was kind of where I was like, all right, this, this, this music thing is more than just something I'm listening to on my way to school. Like that's when I really kind of got engulfed in it and really started trying to figure out, you know, what do I want to do with this? And yeah. (laughs) I really think that's the difference between uh, people who I think we when, when I hear like uh, I see like these uh, beat makers or, or stuff like that on um, maybe not. I mean, I, I don't see them on TikTok. Cause I don't have a TikTok, but I'll see like the repost and maybe even on Instagram where it's like they'll have a beat and it, and it sounds cool, but it's very much so like. I mean, it's it's just that it's just a beat, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't yeah. really have it doesn't have any life to it. it doesn't really have anything going on versus, you know, I'm saying somebody who, like I said, you you actually have that relationship with an artist where you've been around him. You you listen to his his, you know, how he raps, his cadence, his accent, his his rhyme scheme, all these different things so much to the point where you can actually construct beats and be like without even talking to him being like, yo, you would kill this shit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, and then he'd be like, yo, and then actually liking it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel mm-hmm. like that type of relationship you don't really see too often. You know, you have, um, you know, more, you know, recently, like you're seeing uh, the the Alchemist and Larry June. <clears throat> That's a yeah. fucking beautiful mix. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like yeah, yeah. I feel there's nothing that Alchemist probably can't send Larry June. And he's just not like, okay. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He about to, you know what I'm saying? About to get up there and do it. Or like, uh, or 40 and Drake. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing, too, Mm because that makes me think, like, what you're saying, like, where it's just a beat. One thing to keep in mind, though, is sometimes they make beat to kind of, the beat is just a canvas. It's It was made to have your bars on it. So it's not going to sound complete until there's bars on it. And then it Mm. sounds totally different. Like, there's some Drake beats where I'm like, if I heard this beat by itself, I'm like, it's not done. It's missing something. It's not done. But then when you hear Drake's vocals on it and the way they mix it, it sounds totally different. So to me, that's not something I really 
like I try, like I'm working on now, like making something and purposely leaving a space for vocals. Because to me, that's a that's a skill. Like I know what to put in here where it's not too much. That's why type beat producers, like we're talking about, it, it is kind of an interesting type of production, but yeah. it, they do have to have skills to be able to do that. Like I, sure. like for you sure. can listen to those beats. And those are easy to freestyle to because it's like there's space for you to do so. Some of my beats aren't like that. Like that's why working with Nazis and, and um, Bentley the Poet, like working with these types of people was helpful for me because it was like, how do I, okay, this beat is great, but there's, I got to take something out. What can I take out that makes the beat still sound done, but gives them space? Like it, it was very, uh, a, a very, Interesting time for me to, to it has get to be a hard decision process, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like yeah. painting something and being like, This is a masterpiece, but being like, Let me make it not a masterpiece <laughs> and erase yeah. it. <laughs> but you gotta understand though, but what you get in in the end is still a beautiful masterpiece, it's still a collaboration, it's still two minds coming together to make a great product. So that's why at first it was kind of like, Okay, is this good? But then now it's easy because now I, I enjoy it. Because I kind of know what to expect. And I go back to the point I was saying, as I work with artists, where I know no matter what you, you give me something on your worst day, and it's still going to be good. Because I trust that you're going to come through. I'm going to deliver for you. You're going to deliver for me. And it's a great end, you know, end project. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So tell me, tell me about one of, the, one of the best collaborations that you've done um, to date. You know, so um, one of the one, I'll say more... If not, if not necessarily the the best, um, and they might be one of the same, but if not necessarily the best sonically, but just like the the best time that you had actually collaborating with another artist. So we said artist, you mean like a musician? Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so musician will probably be nonsense. Like those those, I think we did like six songs. Like those six songs were crazy, and the response we got for those songs was crazy. Because that was, I mean, I've worked with artists here and there, but I, like I said, I kind of consider myself more of, a, more of an artist more than someone who makes beats just for somebody to rap on. So that was a change of pace for me. So that was probably an exciting experience and being able to work with somebody and come out with a rollout plan, which I feel like it's slept on, but that's a whole nother topic. But a rollout plan, a promotion, to me, is fun and it's necessary. It's very necessary. You know, when it comes like music or you know, trying hype. to be an artist, yeah, you have to know how to promote yourself and push yourself. So, being able to talk with somebody, we're on the same wave with the music and getting it out and what we want to do, it was an enjoyable experience. And I think the end project product really kind of showed that for sure. Yeah, I, I, I definitely I tapped in with a few of those tracks. I definitely do. I, I, I fuck with that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, for sure. Y'all definitely do y'all's thing, man. And um, <clears throat> one of the things, excuse me, one of the things that um, when I find myself listening to, uh, you know, kind of like your, your your instrumental tracks, you know, one thing mm -hmm. that I kind of look for, I look for pretty much two things. Um, well, yeah, maybe two things. I look for music that has to match my feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like some, there's mm -hmm. some music that you can have that's instrumental that you might be feeling down and melancholy. You might be feeling happy. You might be feeling, you know, motivated. You might be like a, you know what I'm saying? Like in a, in a low feed, trying to chill, trying to study type of vibe or whatever. So it's like, I need something that can match whatever I'm feeling. And then secondly, it just, it has to, it, it has to kind of, it has to keep my attention. Some people like to just right. have music in the background it doesn't catch it. One thing about yours is that one thing I listen to some of your beats and randomly in the middle of the beat, maybe not even middle of the beat, like a third of the beat, it should have just switched. Yeah. <laughs> like, some people don't like that, but it's like which is some people don't like that. They like it to just be that loop the whole way through, or just like yeah, that, like I think of it as like no disrespect, but like at Target. Like there's if there's no music playing when you go to Target, you would notice. Like, why is it so quiet here? There's always music playing in the background. And some people like that where it's there. And it's it it allows me to keep doing what I'm doing, um, but me I can't give you that. Like I'm like <laughs> that to me that's the straight shot. That's from point A to point B. I'm gonna give you the scenic route. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna take you all over the place. You're gonna hear something that you'll never hear again, or this whole beat is gonna switch. And that's mostly due to my ADD because I can't just <laughs> if I get bored <laughs> with it, I'm like, all right, 
let's switch it. Or sometimes it's just a flex. Like I'll get a sample and because the funny thing about me is I always start with the hook first. That's why sometimes like you hear the beat, it will start off with the hook and then there's a verse, a bridge, a chorus, a hook. And then the mm-hmm. second verse is totally different because I'll start with the hook and then I'm just making variations. And then it's kind of a process of elimination. I kind of add on to things and that's how a beat comes to completion. But yeah, it's, I, I have to, I'm going to give you all types of, when, you'd, be, you'd be surprised at some of the sounds that are in my beats. I don't feel like a lot of people know this. There's like whale sounds, like dolphin noises, birds. I be listening to shit, man. Yeah. I feel like um, I feel like I was listening to um, you might know this track. <clears throat> it's called uh, "Ants" by Edit. Um, I think the group is called Edit, but the track is called "Ants." Um, mm-hmm. if, you, if you get a chance, uh, check that out. It's um, yeah, I'm it's, it's, a, it's a crazy track, and I feel like I've I've been listening to this track for damn near almost a decade now. Like it's been out for a minute, and for the first couple of years, I was just hearing these random parts. And it was just like, hold on, that like it was it, it just be these little like or like pew, it'd be like these little ass little this you know yeah. subtle ass things that only happen at one point in the song, and then you'd be thinking that it's gonna happen again at that neck when it goes around the the you know when it goes around a couple yeah. bars and it don't come, you'd be like, all right, now you look stupid, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I like those I like those beats. You know what I'm saying? I really feel like they um. They keep you on your toes, you know what I'm saying? And and I think yeah. that you know, uh one thing that I've realized about a lot of the producers that I that I've um that I've had the either pleasure of talking to on the podcast or just you know saying knowing through our lives and shit. Um lives and shit. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> <our life. laughs> um one thing that I realize is that the way that they make their music usually is a it's it's usually a pretty good indication of their personality trait. It's yeah. usually like it's you. It's nine times you know what I'm saying. Like you, you could sometimes that people make music completely opposite, but a lot of the producers I realize they make music kind of that, that that aligns with their personality, and um, kind of segueing a little bit into mental health. You know, I, I like to ask everybody that comes onto the show in a real way because mm-hmm. you know we ask we get asked it probably every day, but people don't really actually take the opportunity to stop and get the answer. But how are you doing? I'm I'm doing good at this point, man. Last year was a bad year. It's my productive year, but that's because it was probably like one of my worst years ever. So mm-hmm. I'm in a good place compared to where I was at that point in time. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up. That's I mean that's yeah. good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah, I mean, without cause... without touching too much into it, like what actually let's not let's not even talk about the negative shit. Why is this year better? I was talking about that. Well, I mean, we can talk it's not really negative. It's, I mean, it's it's life, like it just there were some deaths in the family during last year, like back to back to back to back. So it just kind of put me in a slump, but that's why music, once again, that's why I don't care about the money. I don't care about all that stuff. This is something that helps me. You know what I'm saying? So just being able to have an outlet like this where I can just, it's like working on puzzles all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like just constructing beats. It just helped me clear my head and it kept me going because I mean, as soon as I felt like, okay, I'm back to normal, bam, hit me again. I'm like, ah, like, you know, so it's like I kept falling back and it it was just Coffee Breaks Volume 2 was the first project where I know my emotion was in it. Like, and that was weird to me. Like, you hear like a Mary J. Blige album. If she's going through heartbreak, you know it's going to be a good album. But, you know, you don't want that for Mary because you want Mary to be happy, but it's like. But it is what it is. Mary J. Blige, Taylor Swift, Adele. Drake, listen, they get their heart broke. That, that album gonna be fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see him with a tissue. It's like it's coming. It's coming. it's coming. That heartbreak. But it's like, but for me, it was like most of that album was in minor key. It was kind of darker than I'm used to doing. But that was where I was at, and the fact that it went the way it went was part of the reason I came out of it. I'm like, people like fancy. I think that's probably one of my biggest songs. It's the one where. Uh, or my pet and my dog in the video or the little animation mm-hmm. that kind of goes around the room. So that song yeah. was like made at like with my dad in mind. So for that me to put that song out just because it meant a lot to me and for it to just like go like it did, that was like okay, I'm doing the right thing with this music thing. You know what I'm saying? Like people with rap, it's like sometimes you're you're blocked by region. Like if you rap, you speak English, you can only go so far with it. There's certain places you can't reach because they don't speak what you speak. But with beats, 
oddly enough, most of my streams don't come from where I'm from. They don't come from Minnesota. They come from other states and outside the country. And it's like, no matter what language they speak, they can understand the feelings I had in this. And it kind of goes to what you're saying. I'm feeling sad. Let me listen to the song because it kind of, it, it sounds how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So being able to connect with people like that for the first time was very interesting. And, and that got me out. You know, that got me out of this place. Like, now I'm good because I'm making music. I'm in a good headspace. And I know that, like, going forward, when this happens again, I know I'm going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? If I can get through that, I know I'll be all right going forward. And I know that I have something to put myself into. Like, I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't doing nothing like that. I was just making the music, and that was enough. So I think learning that and understanding that more so this year is probably the reason I'm doing, you know, as well as I'm doing. Mm. Damn, that's that's that was that was that was a lot, man. I, I feel like um, <laughs> well, <man>. nah, <laughs> nah, it's good. Well, I'm, 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 no, I'm just processing, man. Because one of the things that you said, because I like to, I like to take pieces of what people say, you know, key points. But I like to also not, you know, ignore anything else that was being said. But one of the things that you said that uh, at, close to the beginning, you were saying that it's like making beats is like it was like almost the equivalent of building a puzzle. And you said yeah. it, was, it was something that you did to kind of, you know, what I'm saying to get your mind up in it. And I feel like that. Only enough, I used to do puzzles, so <laughs> it's like it's just like the same. I, it's the same, but I'm, I'm gonna let you finish. But it's the same dedication when I was doing puzzles because I'd be a kid and I was mad about some whatever. I've been on. I have my headphones in and I'm doing puzzles. So when I'm making beats, it's the same thing. I'm sitting at a table with my laptop, with my headphones in, and I'm zoned out. So it's like the same. It, it, it has the same effect for me. And building yeah. a puzzle, you know what I'm saying? The only thing that pisses you off more than more than not ever starting a puzzle is not finishing the motherfucker. So I feel like yeah. <laughs> once you start that shit, you know what I'm saying? It's, and, I, and I feel like having that dedication, especially when it comes to music, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. said I had seven tracks. It was, it was, it was, it was probably more like complete, probably like two, it's probably like seven pieces of tracks. Cause like but, <laughs> but if you knew you know if you knew like the music stuff in my phone, like you know, seven tracks, like seven tracks. If you had, you know that it's seven tracks, it's better than me. Like, if you ask me how many beats I'm working on right now, I couldn't tell you. Like, let me, hold on, let me show you. Like, look at this. Look at this. This is all beats that I'm working on, that I have. You see, I got color quotes. I got check marks. Hey, I got emojis. I <laughs> a beetle. Like, that, that organization, man, I'm trying to say, that's, that's yeah. the one that they teach me in school that I have not picked up an organization. <laughs> It is you key. Know, like I have, like I color code beats. So if it's red, then I know it's not done. If it's yellow, I got to mix it. If it's green, it's done. And I don't touch it. Like that I have to put these in. Stop being lazy. Yeah, because if it goes green, because you can mix with miss mess with the same beat forever. But I know once yeah. I put that green on there, I can't touch it again. For sure. Do you? Do you so? Do you? How often? Um. And and, and um. And it's kind of you know bringing the full circle. Um. Actually, you know, I'm gonna change my I'm gonna change my last question. <laughs> so, if you had an opportunity to to get a message out to um, you know, what I'm saying the other producers out there, you know, what I'm saying um, that's you know, because I feel like it's it's real easy to talk to the people who are trying to make who who are trying to make beats for money, who are trying to mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying get themselves out there and stuff like that. But there's not really a lot of message for people out there who are just doing it because they love to do it. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. like, what message would you have for them? Um. For me, I guess the one thing I can think of is understand what you're getting into and understand what you want to get out of it. Like for me, I didn't really understand, like I knew I wanted to make beats, but like now I'm pretty sure on exactly what I want my end goal to be and what I'm willing to do or what, what I'm willing not to do or what I'm not willing to do. Um, one of the ways that I was able to figure that out is by researching and one of the things i researched um i guess one of the names that comes to my mind but i, I plugged to everybody like i i'm like you should pay me for this but her name is um susan rogers she was an engineer for prince and she's a music scientist so one of the things i was doing was i would watch her lectures there'd be a couple hours or something like that i have her playing on the tv and she the way she breaks down how people process music and understand music and what draws them to music like she said, uh, there's a, a part of one of her lectures where she was like, when you hit 
like in your 30s, it's harder to put somebody on the music when they're in their 30s. Like you are pretty set in stone of who you like. And if you think about it, your parents, how many times have your parents brought to you a new artist that they found? Like they don't. It's always the stuff that they had at some point in time, like they stuck in it, stuck in their genre. So hearing how her, she was explaining why that is and what you could do to push yourself and motivate yourself, like to me, that was important, not only as a artist, but as a producer, because it's like, it lets me understand, like, you don't always need to do what's hot right now. Like, there's a reason why that's hot right now. There's a reason why people are drawn to that. Maybe it's easier to focus and understand that versus you trying to understand the sound. Because by the time you get it down pat, we've moved on to something else. So exactly. I think this understanding what you're doing and understanding what you're getting yourself into with this music industry, whether it's the Beat Stars community, whether it's just putting out music yourself, whatever you want to do, work with people in your hometown or, or state, understand that and make sure you know how you want to approach it. Like some people get into it and figure it out. For me, I realized it's easier for me to look into it first and then get my feet wet. Like with YouTube, I'm a watch, I'm a nerd with this. I would watch all these little videos on the algorithm and all that. Just like I did on my IG. Like I was like, okay, this stuff is changing. This is how this works. So I figured it out and I started trial and error, trial and error until I got it down pat, or at least to my standards. Like I'm happy with how my IG is now, but sure. it, it, it took some evolution and researching to to make it work so i think as producers we have a lot of power that we don't acknowledge so once we really start utilizing that and kind of realize that you can make a beat pop uh, just on its own you know, it doesn't need vocals it can do well just by itself if that's what you want to do but you just have to be able to uh know how to execute that I agree with that, man. I agree with that. You know, one of the things that I feel like, you know, I hear a lot of people say, majority of people say, you don't really hear a lot of people be like, oh, I like, I like their voice. You hear like, oh, I like that beat. I like the, I like the way that that sound. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's what they really remember about the song. <clears throat> you know, no, 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 no slight to any of the artists, you know, the yeah. artists out there, but yeah, but yeah, that's definitely what people really remember about it. But for sure, man, it's, it's been a really dope ass interview. And I really appreciate you coming on to the show, man. Well, thank you. Really yeah, thank you for having me, man. This is this is nice. I love like talking about this and conversations. Like I said, I really respect what you do with your podcast. Like this is outlets like these are really helpful, and it's great just to see how you guys work because the podcast creators, like I know, I, I don't have the talent to do what y'all do. So the fact that you can do it and you know control the conversation and you know do your research and you know just the the respect and allowing people to kind of express themselves. It's, it's always hats off to you. I'm going to do it right now. I need to shape up, but it's always hats off to you. <laughs> hats off to you because, you know, it, it's greatly appreciated for real. For sure, man. I, I just be talking shit, bro. I just be hitting. My <laughs> up and like, hey, you want to go talk shit with me? That's, that's all I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate it, man. And uh, please let everybody know where they can follow you and where they can find your music. Um, so it's Joey Beats on IG, on YouTube, and on Twitter. Um, I got uh, music on all DSPs as J Jomi, uh, J O M Y period on DSPs. Um, yeah, I got an uh, album coming out on March 28th, or EP, I should say. Um, with some animations coming for that. I have a project coming with Wyatt Coleman, I believe, on the 23rd. Um, I got a song coming with uh, Worms Ali in April. And me and Nas says, of course, we will be back with some stuff coming too. So I got a lot of stuff coming out this summer. Um, yeah. And, you know, definitely, you know, check out the uh, the IG uh, to keep up with me and kind of see those animations I got going on. Um, yeah. And thanks for listening. You know, yeah. Like like I said, thank, again, thank you again for having me. This is great. For sure, man. Like I said, I appreciate you coming on. Make sure that y'all tapping with his Instagram, man. He has some dope ass animations on there. Yeah. And most importantly, he has some dope ass beats. Make sure that y'all tap in. Clue to Don, Country Fan Mill Podcast. We're back with another one.